Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, we are talking about the state of humans right now, mentally, physically, spiritually. I told some of you all last year, 2021, that there were going to be those individuals that would be in pain. They would be feeling their share of issues as a result of things that they have done. And here we are watching folks slowly but surely go through all sorts of problems that they never had before they did some things. They're coping. They're hiding. They're lying. They're denying. They're covering up. They're operating in the flesh rather than in the spirit. They're doing things based on what other human beings who are flawed, who are filled with their share of, I don't know, I don't understand. And they're going along with whatever, with whoever meaner people, irritable, frustrated, stressed out, blaming everyone and their share of select things that they want to reason as a result of why I'm going through like I'm going through. But God, God knew, God saw, God showed many of us that if you decide to go down this left-hand path, this is what you're going to encounter. Man and woman are not going to be able to explain some things to you. Man and woman who said, I'm okay, I'm all right, there's nothing wrong. When they don't want to be caught being in the wrong, they're going to gaslight. They're going to say that what you see isn't what you see. What you hear isn't what you hear. I've been saying this for years when it came to all sorts of issues, whether it was the workplace, the family setting, a holiday event, right? People don't like the truth. People hate the truth. People don't want to be wrong. They will fight you. They will separate the closest of friends just so that you don't discover or expose the truth. I'm looking at all these mean people. And I'm saying to myself, they don't even understand. They don't even understand that who they were just a year ago or two years ago. They are not the same person. But yet, when you sit down and you have that conversation with some folks and you say, listen, I don't know what came over you. I don't know why you acting like this. You had never been this way before. They will swear up and down they're the same people, and that's not true. Breathing in new substances in the air. Being around circles of folks breathing the same air. Touching again. Not washing hands again. Going back to rubbing noses, eyes, and ears with dirty hands. All sorts of substances entering into the body. And the body fights. And sometimes that fight shows up in the eyes of people, in the tone of their voice. What's wrong with you? There's nothing wrong with me. There is. You just mind your business. You never acted like this until you did. That's somebody's conversation. That's somebody's truth. You no, 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 it's this, it's that. No, 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 it's what you did. Some of you all had to get indignant. 
Some others was putting Bibles up on shelves, so to speak. I've had enough of this. You going to stop this lying. You going to stop this covering up and being secretive. What really happens to so-and-so? What is going on with you? There's some people who they didn't want us to go to the doctor's office with them because they knew that they was telling us some lies. I'm just being transparent. I came across these individuals and I said, what's the deal with, you know, not wanting to go to the doctor or not wanting us to go with them to the doctor? Because at the doctor's office, if the doctor is an honest, upright type of human being with a conscience, there lies the truth. And if you have been the one going around saying one thing while you're experiencing something else, you know you don't want your cover blown. I remember years ago, an individual swore up and down that he didn't have any type of STIs. And back in those days, it was called STD. Swore up and down, looked me dead in my face. I found out six months later, uh uh-oh, what is this? I confronted that individual. He started giving me a bunch of information about that particular issue. And I said, but you told me. And when somebody does harm to you in that way, all sorts of evil starts to creep up. You start thinking about eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. How dare you say this? How dare you persuade it, convince me, assured me, But they're all here. They're all here. Some of you all, you have your rules in terms of what you will tolerate, who you will date, and what that person is to bring to the table. But can I tell you that there's a lot of liars, a lot of folks that don't want you to know how deep the rabbit hole goes, but yet they want to be in you. They don't want to show proof that they didn't. Because, well, I have my reasons. But whatever those reasons are, they should not be impacting you for the rest of your life. They shouldn't be impacting you negatively for the rest of your life. Let me Be specific and clarify and underline. If what somebody is hiding, covering up, is going to impact somebody else, shouldn't they be by themselves? Negatively, right? Negatively impact. Shouldn't they mind their own business? Shouldn't they stop? Being that one that's giving customer service a hard time. (laughs) You need somebody to shop for you because you don't know how to act when you go in the stores because of your condition. You don't know how to behave yourself because of what somebody did to you. And you refuse counseling and you refuse extra care. And you refuse to believe that what you did or what somebody else did caused harm to you. I was mortified. I was crying. I couldn't believe you lied to me. You lied to me. You lied to me. God's exposing liars right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody say it out loud. Recognize it for what it is. Somebody lied to you. 
They lied to you. They lied to you. That's why you don't sleep good at night. That's why sometimes your stomach churns. That's why you are checking behind people. That's why at times people accuse you of being paranoid because somebody in this circle in this room is lying to me. God says, I'm showing you the evidence and proof in the way that they're looking at you and the way that they're talking to you. You can smell the sickness sometimes coming out of people's bodies. They don't have to tell you a story. You can smell it. You can see it. You can hear it. Why are you talking like this? That person's in pain. Why are you flying off the handle over every little thing? And why is your voice so high? And other, other, other? Because they're in pain. Because they know what they have done. I remember an individual. He was told by the doctor repeatedly not to lift certain things. He chose to continue to lift certain things. Oh, whose fault is it? It's his. You didn't listen to the doctor. Now you suffer the consequences. You don't have the support system. Let me tell you something. God only gives you so many years, so much time, so much money, so many people around you to support you, right? Some of us know this. But then after a while, when you repeatedly do things that cause injury and harm to yourself or to someone else, you going to reap those consequences. Ain't no sense in getting mad at God. But we got those, though. I see them in the spirit as I'm speaking. They get mad at God for what doctors told them, what their wives, girlfriends, husbands, boyfriends, mamas, daddies, sisters, brothers, cousins told them years ago. And now you years later reaping the consequences and you mad at God. Some folks still mad at God over things that. The doctor already took care of, already, you know, gave him the necessary prescriptions, what have you. Still mad at God because this should have never happened to begin with. Excuse me, but didn't God tell you through various signs, wonders, people not to do certain things? So why are you mad? If anything, you should be that one that's humbled, right? Some of us, we have had these conversations over the years with some of these hard-headed, rebellious, stubborn individuals. You should be humble. You should be on your knees, Asking the Lord, the one true God, not man, not woman, but the one true God for forgiveness. Then once you can get past that, then you can get up off your knees and go and ask those others who you offended for forgiveness. Jesus, I'm speaking a truth to someone. Because you got a lot of nerve, some of you all, snapping your fingers, eye rolling, deep sign, blaming everybody that's out there that you do business with. Meanwhile, the real issue is within you. Mm, come on. You didn't take your vitamins like you were supposed to. You didn't watch your weight like you were supposed to. You didn't exercise like you were supposed to. You didn't eat the necessary things that you were supposed to and purge out the things that you've been eating and drinking that you wasn't supposed to. People have told you time and time again what your pre-existing conditions are, but yet you continue to do things because everybody else said, well, like we were told a long time ago, if everybody else jump over the bridge or off the bridge, you supposed to do it too? No, but see, we got some very intelligent individuals that know your psychological makeup and they know how, dare we say it, dumb you can be. Ooh, that's insulting. Hmm. The Lord spoke to me, said that there are fools in the camp and those fools are trying to convince you, persuade you and get you to do because they were fools. How many folks got involved with an organization that you knew it was nothing but a hustle? It was a scam. Or you were part of a gang and you knew it was nothing but a hustle or a scam. But somebody said, well, if you refer to three people, you'll be able to get your money back. And you knew it was a hustle and you knew it was a scam, what you were referring to some other people, but you wanted your money back. Hmm. Hmm. Right. I got hustled. And so now you become the hustler and you go out there and you do some things. Isn't that what's going on in mainstream media? Some folks got caught. Believing the lie. Realize that it was a lie, but I guess I got to at least recoup something from my losses. So I'm going to go out here and I'm going to do this and say that. And somebody on the back end says, here's the money. Here's the opportunity. 
here's whatever they promised you just so long as you don't speak the truth, Jesus. Once again, intelligent people, they know how to play dumb folk. Folk that's not in the know. Folk that believe that what's in front of them is just what they said. Meanwhile, there is deeper things beyond what we see. There is the information that the mainstream public gets. And then there's the information that those who are who are not considered mainstream public will get. See, if you have ever worked for a corporation, you know that the workers, they get their information, right? And it's usually censored information. It's just what you need to know. That's it. Nothing more. Then there are those who are slightly above them that they get a little bit more information. So they think there's something special because, well, you got a little bit more information than the workers under you, but you still don't have all the information. Then above you is the upper managers who they know more of the story than you, the middle, and you that are under the middle. But they still don't know as much information as those that are above them. Like the people who founded the organization. <laughs> like the people who got their stock wrapped up in the organization. They don't work it. They just sit back and they watch the money affiliated with it. And they usually know a whole lot more than anybody will ever know. But then above them are the corporate entities that move in shape. And there's only so many of those. They are the hidden hand. And they know it all because they orchestrated the plan. And usually the pawns, those that are the workers, the ones that report that are on shift. Or those that are on salary. Or what have you. Are the sacrificial lambs. So to speak. The ultimate sacrificial lamb of all lambs is Jesus Christ himself, who through him, you might be saved. But if you don't have a spiritual compass, you don't know where the wind is going to blow. And so therefore, stress comes upon you as a result of the things that you're affiliated with, the people who you are connected to, what somebody has told you. And now here comes your share of issues. Now you got the headache and you got the backache and you got all sorts of conditions that you never had before. And it wasn't so much about what you put in your body. It was what came through your ear gate, the information that you received. What am I going to do now, says someone who's about to lose their job. What are you going to do now? Have you consulted with the one true God or are you still of the flesh? Because you see... When you listen to audio messages from wisdom speakers, inspirational speakers, motivational speakers, people who just got good old fashioned common sense. You should be able to tap into what your third eye has been telling you all along. It's not good for you. It's not right for you. It's what's making you mean. The premise behind this message. Mean people have a way of bringing out the meanness in others. Mean people, stubborn, hard-headed, rebellious. Those that are affiliated with all sorts of sin will not inherit the kingdom of God. We went over that sort of thing in 2 Timothy chapter 3. So many individuals all over this land haven't connected the dots as to where your meanness comes from. Or you did connect the dots, but you choose not to change, not to be a better human being. You could care less in terms of helping others, truly helping them mentally, physically, and spiritually. We don't expect much from those who can't even treat their own family members right, much less everybody else. I know that I don't sit there talking about, I wish, I hope. That's why I told many of you all a long time ago, you better let go of the toxic communications and the toxic people, the folks that want you to stay at their spiritual and mental and physical levels. Elementary, my dear. 
elementary. No, I want to improve upon my mindset. I want to grow. I want to get past the foolishness. I want to see as to why these individuals time and time again are going through like they are. And then you start connecting the dots and you realize that there's a lot going on with some folks. It's layers upon layers. And the ultimate goal is what? Satan wants to kill to steal and to destroy and he has various ways of doing just that it's not just one size fits all because we know better those of us who wanted some individuals to reap what they have sown we know that even with God he has a way of creating a reaping season that doesn't look like the last season come on Somebody is still thinking about years prior as to how the enemy as well as God was working. Meanwhile, they both have shifted. They have both seen things for what they really are over the years. While man and woman is still outdated. And that'll make some folks mean too because you don't see what's around the corner. And when you don't know what's right around the corner, you're either worried, fearful, mean, ignorant. And some of you all know the rest because you've watched some of your family members over the years, how they declined in health, in mind, body and spirit. The meanness. Why do you have to be so rude? Why do you have to be so disrespectful? Because, well, you don't understand this person hurt me. This person did these things to me. So everybody got to pay the price for what one did. Or what two did. Or five or ten. Okay, well, if that's how you want to live, just don't be surprised when you meet your match. I told one relative years ago, I said, you're going to keep on going into these stores, acting the way you're acting. See, that one over time didn't like me, contrary to what that person had went around telling some folks in the family. I was one who spoke real truth. And when I spoke real truth to that individual, it was, I got to get off the phone. Of course you do. Because you're going around thinking that being sassy and disrespectful and ignorant, not ignorant, but ignorant, you thinking that, oh, you know, somehow that makes you special, makes you, you know, powerful, makes you something of a queen, a diva. And instead, all it does is it makes people curse you and curse your family. And I feel like, and I one day just went all out and say, I feel like folks have not only cursed you, but cursed us as a result of the way you've behaved with others. Oh, no, that's taking it too far. No, I believe that's what's happened. And so now I got to go to my mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers in Christ to pray those curses off of me. As a result of what you said and what you did that offended somebody. You see, some of you, some of you parents and grandparents, sisters and brothers, you didn't connect those dots, did you? Hmm, I didn't think that I could be bringing problems upon my family as a result of going off. Hey, you you don't know at times if you've met your match or not, because your match could be the quiet storm. The storm doesn't always show up roaring. Sometimes it just shows up without notice. You don't know sometimes that that person that's smiling at you saying, have a good day is a child of God. That after you walked out that store, went over into the corner or in the bathroom, took his or her break and prayed in Jesus mighty name that for every time that individual goes around raising up, you know what? May you, O oh heavenly father, deal with that person accordingly. You said that you will avenge. You said vengeance is mine and you saw what that person did. You saw how that person acted. Hey, 
somebody is about to get relieved from all of the foolishness because you being a believer in Christ said, mm, when's the last time I activated that kind of faith, that, those kind of prayers? <laughs> oh, let the next episode where that person freaks out be a life changing situation that will cause them to be humbled before men and women across nations. <laughs> Lord Jesus, some of you all, you know, you've seen people who have been in powerful positions belittle, disrespect, disregard, be dismissive, devalue. Oh, is that what we're doing? Oh, and then you say your prayers. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I give it a few days, weeks, sometimes within minutes. I've heard about that sort of thing happen. Within minutes, oh my goodness, something had, something's about to go down. Oh my, she just left from me cussing and fussing. And now she done went over there and that one, huh, she done met her match. <laughs> I tell you, a lot of interesting things can happen when you got God on a case dealing with mean people. A lot of things can happen when you're that one that finally says, I'm going to stop being mean because <laughs> I don't want that to happen to me. I'm going to have a better spirit about myself. Oh, I'm telling you, the tides start to turn and good things start to happen while everybody else is all upset, still stressed. And in that dark hole of unhappiness, you coming out happy and they're saying, aren't you still in your mess? Yeah, but at least I got a good attitude about what I'm in. But what about you? Hmm. You got to make up in your mind. I'm going to have a good attitude about what I'm in because I know that all this is doing is refining me, making me a better leader, giving me the strength to go on, causing me to do the types of things that I've always wanted to do since I was dragging my feet. Now somebody's finally going to be a business owner after you dealt with so many mean customers at that place that you work at. Mm. It took all those mean people for you to finally realize, you know what? <laughs> I'm finally going to start my own business. Wow. Somebody saying, aha, that's why I'm going through like this. <laughs> Some of you others, no, nah, it's not about you starting your own business. Mm -mm. Some of you all been there, done and seen a movie. Come on, I put my hand up. But what it really is about is about you just overall being a better human being and moving on to the next job, the next opportunity. Now you've learned and now you can give back to the next company. 110 or 20 percent more than what you ever gave another company you see because now I know I understand I had to go through the fire in order to get it you see I thank the one true God I thank the one true God when you realize that you know meanness isn't always about somebody cursing you because I, at times yes somebody did put a curse out there but other times though meanness is just straight up people just having their share of issues and, and they don't have anything to do with you but yet you ready to do battle with people who I don't have a fight with you I'm just mad because you just don't know what I just heard over the phone as I was walking up to your storefront or I'm mad because you don't know what this man or this woman, like one lady told me, she said, I've been married over 50 some years. And her issue, she said, after I said, have a good day, she said, I hope so. Because my issue has been my husband, she said, Lord Jesus. And she decided to get out and about because she was trying to get away from her husband. She didn't want to hurt her husband like he hurt her. Once again, I got to tell somebody this meanness that you're taking offense to, that you're assuming everybody mad at you. You know, you had a smile on your face the other day or the day before or a few minutes ago. Why are you taking that in thinking that somebody mad at you? You did everything right. You know, you did everything right. You check mark. You recheck. Did I say the you know line right? Did I? Um, you know, take care of the packaging? Did I, you know, ring up the order? Did I, um, you know, fill out the form? Um, why is the manager? Why is the supervisor? Why is my coworker? Why is the customer? Why are they so this way and that way? It's not about you. As long as you're doing your job, forget the meanness. That's all over there. Sometimes, as we very well know, what, almost, what was it? Oh, it was, what, about 40-some years of a menstrual cycle? 
I had the worst of the worst of menstrual cycles. They finally had come up with with a name years back called PMDD. And some folks was like, why are you looking at me mean? Why, why are you acting like that towards me? They didn't know I was going through. I'm walking around very, very stressed about my clothing. Walking around very, very concerned about whether or not I had an odor. And was I going to have to go home? And that's going to cut into my money. And meanwhile, folks it was internalizing. She mad. What's wrong with her? I don't know. I didn't say nothing. I didn't do nothing. Of course, you didn't. So quit being so sensitive. That's somebody's word. Quit being so sensitive. That's why for some individuals, they will call other individuals weak, sensitive. Why? Because you internalize everything. You assume that everybody that got a frown on their face, it's all about you, narcissist. While other people calling other folks narcissists, you think that every time somebody have an attitude, it's about you? Every time they have a short fuse, it's about you? Some people got mental health issues. Let's go there for their meanness undiagnosed, unchecked, didn't take medicine for it, self-medicating, that's where their meanness is coming from. Other folks, old injuries, yeah, used to be the jock, huh? Used to get all the girls, used to have all this, and now he got some problems in private places, and that makes him mean. Come on, oh, we got to be transparent. I got to give you example after example, because some folks will never tell you why they mistreat their wives. Why they mistreat their husbands. She can't do what she used to do back in the day for that man. That man's mad and she's mad too. Some folks is mad, mean, upset because that one lied, cheated, creeped. Some folks is mad because they made the wrong decision in the job that they chose. Well, once you realize what's happened, what's the source of your meanness, what you going to do about it? What you going to do about it? That's the question that some of you all need to ask your little mean circle that I told you a long time ago to let go of. And how's that coming along? Because what evil communications is going to corrupt good manners? You stay with those mean people long enough. You going to be mean just like them. There was an individual sitting up there. Remind me of one of them mean old grandmas. I didn't say he was a mean grandma, but I did say you acting like one of them grandmas. <laughs> And then, of course, his meanness showed up. He was offended because, hey, I called it like it. I saw it. You done took on so much of that woman's personality. You're acting just like her. Even sassing it up like her. Sashaying like her. And I got to thinking. I said, "Mm mm-hmm. I said, this is the problem with some of these males. I'm going to stay there for a minute. You've been around all these mean women. And even though you claim to be so happy and nice and sweet and stuff, you better look at all those mean women who were strict with you and they belittled you and berated you and broke you down. And now you get into these circles with other women and you act just like those mean women. But yet you call yourself a man. Hmm. And then you get upset because somebody challenges you on your manlyhood. Because for some people, they thought their manlyhood was to be mean to every woman. Because a woman was mean to them. Somebody need to get tell me mother you're sorry. Somebody need to get tell me mother you're sorry. Somebody needs to get my book tell me mother you're sorry by Nicole McGuire. Yes, she was sorry. And you have gotten to a place where now people are saying, "Mhm, you sorry of a husband, you sorry of a parent, you sorry of a grandparent." You see? Because mean people don't bring out the best in you. They bring out the worst in you. They bring out the worst in you. They will mark you for the rest of your life. Think about all these little kids back in the day was so happy, right? With their friends having a good old time. And then somewhere between their tween and teen years, there was the meanness that showed up and showed out. And when that meanness showed up and showed out upon them from this adult and that adult, 
they started being that way and called themselves strong. I don't see strength in a mean person. I see nothing but meanness. I don't see it. I see that little boy or that little girl that inherited all of their mean mother and mean daddy's qualities, dare we say it, traits, behaviors. How about that? Lashing out at every man, woman, and child, beast that walks. And when you got that sword of a tongue, you die by that sword of a tongue. You hear me? Let me say that for somebody because that's a prophecy. If you refuse to change and you think that everything that I said is wrong and you're taking offense and that devilish spirit all around is trying to make you turn this message into something that it shouldn't be other than a wise message. You gonna reap. You gonna reap the consequences of that sort of a tongue. Somebody told me who they really were. All the while I was saying, oh, she is so sweet. She's a nice person. The Lord said, <laughs> Oh, when will you learn? And matter of fact, you don't even like the word nice. You said it's overused, but there you go. Okay. And then one day out of her own mouth, she said, oh, I'm a smart mouth. <clears throat> I mean, I will go there. Okay. You don't know me talking about somebody else. And I said, well, 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 thank you for revealing who you are. Not much of a friend. Mm, I thought I was going to have a good friend one day. You see? It hurts because, see, I don't like to tiptoe around people. I don't like to feel like I'm not comfortable or feel safe to just be who I am around people. Some people have even said, why don't you just be who you are? No, not with you. I don't feel comfortable. See, that's why sometimes some of you all who you're saying, why is it that I, I just feel like some people are just so fake with me or, you know, they tend to cover up who they are and they, they tend to be more transparent and open with others, but not with me. Well, you might want to check your personality. Your personality might be strict. It might be firm. It might be sassy. It might be an attitude going on there. People don't feel comfortable with you. So you got to make yourself friendly as the scripture says. So that people will be open with you. And then if you're one who takes offense to any and everything that somebody says and you're very sensitive, no, you don't keep friends very long. Let's just be honest. You don't. You see, some of you all, you know, people like this. I want to be real with her and sit back and we can, you know, just drink iced tea or lemonade or, you know, have a soda or something. Right. But mm -mm, there's something about her or something about him. I get it. Mean people. Didn't want to get that undiagnosed, unchecked, mental, physical, spiritual condition taken care of. I can't be around you because I'm only going to give you but so much advice. Mean that shows up from store to store, business to business, event to event. Even pictures. Look at some of those pictures of your relatives and friends one day that you took with your camera on your phone. Look at their eyes. The eyes are the window to the soul. You could almost you could almost see the meanness just drip from their eyeballs. You know? Years ago, look at some of the old pictures. You can see it, can't you? When they were little kids, one particular relative and in-law said, look at these two pictures. See me? I said, yeah, I see you. He said, now look at this picture over here. I said, ooh, and he pointed out one of the relatives. He said, he'd been mean ever since he was a little kid. That was nothing but an answer to prayer because I wondered. I was curious about that particular relative. You see? You sit back and God will use the mouth of people to tell you who people really are. Stop being so quick for some of you singles to get into bed with people. Why don't you get around their family members and their friends? Hang out at some of the establishments and somebody will make a joke like, yeah, she can be real mean sometime. <laughs> they just told you the truth. Believe that. Believe that. Now, can you handle that meanness sometimes? Because we all got those sides to us. Okay. But is she like that all the time? Hmm. So then you go to the next little, you know, group meeting or something or you, you know, some place they frequent and somebody else says, oh, wow. <laughs> so you're with her? 
how'd you manage to snag that one right there that's another sign so this person is starting to show hmm that there's another side to them and then by the third time hey 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 whoa wait a minute i guess you must be having a good season you're with a happy-go-lucky type of person because you know you typically are mean wow that's three strikes you're out you shouldn't be intimate or have somebody close in your circle that folks are always joking or making a comment about how mean they are because eventually that dog of a man or a woman is going to be mean to you growling and biting and snarling at you and you, for some of you all, you know, you got a short fuse. You've been through a lot. You know, you can't tolerate certain things. Ain't no sense in befriending mean folks. You keep them at a distance. I work with you, but I'm not going to lunch with you. I work with you, but I guess I'm not going to be the one to call you. because i can't deal with that off day and you get to talking your crazy talk and saying some things that's out of pocket i got family too because mean people are good for talking about when they have been so very bad toward others i got people you do do you hmm well i got people too and what we all gonna get our people in trouble behind you and your harsh tongue how about this i just keep my distance then this way you can stay with your people and i can stay with my people and there won't be a war between people but look at countries for a moment countries that are mean toward one another you didn't do what i wanted you to do you didn't pay the price that i wanted you to pay you didn't give me the land or the necessary resources that i wanted so now out comes meanness because it's elementary my dear <laughs> that behind a lot of this chaos there are mean people ruling the world mean people that once again in another audio i said smiling in your face all the time they want to take your place the backstabbers lord jesus mean people will backstab they will say the types of things they will do the types of things that make you feel at ease make you feel comfortable and you'll even question hmm, maybe those people that we ran into that you know know that person maybe this person isn't so mean because well he bought me something and he was quite polite to me and then one day the meanness showed up because you rejected him the meanness showed up because you had an off day the meanness showed up because you didn't give what somebody wanted the meanness wow it, sh it creeps up quick it creeps up quick i remember i was thinking oh you know it's going to be a good day with this one particular relative until she asked me for some money and I didn't have it to give. And the rest of that day, she was mean. <clears throat> Needless to say, I learned. I learned, oh, so that's how we act? Wow, okay. And she was marked. I never forgot it. I was just a mere child. You asking a child for money. A child. That's how desperate she was for money. And I said, I got to walk softly with that one. And that's how I got in her good graces because I didn't challenge her. But then when I started challenging her, I got out of her good graces and we didn't speak for over a year. But when I did finally had our conversation with her after almost a year and a half, I told her what I noticed over the years and the things that I had been going through and how I didn't have room to be dealing with her meanness. And I didn't. And some of you all, that's how it is. You got to draw that line in the sand with these mean people at work and elsewhere. You got to draw the line in the sand with your mean relatives. I know you love them. I know you care for them. But they're mean. And we got many of them in my own family. And they rubbed off on me over the years. And I said, it's nothing but the grace of God that I did not end up six feet deep in my grave.
behind meanness. I asked the Lord over the years, I said, I need to be changed. I need to be healed. I know what where the source of the meanness is coming from, and I need to be healed because you hear, you know, how people will laugh and joke and talk about other people, roast them, you know, and so you don't think that's meanness, but it is, even though it's funny and you got a lot of laughs because there's types of meanness, right? It's not always about the person who's cussing and fussing, but there's the type of meanness where you're always saying something, uh, you know, so-called funny about you know, someone, but meanwhile, they're hurting about that. And so they turn on you and they become mean. You see, that's why some relationships with comedians don't last because they think they're being funny. And yeah, the room is laughing, but at whose expense? You see, at whose expense? So when you hear that, oh, you know, it was the yo mama jokes and it was the, you know, the yo, you so fat stuff and all of that other stuff, it hurts people. And so I'm like, you're not going to win any souls to Christ. Always talking about this one and that one in that sort of way, you know, um, and, and it shouldn't even be allowed, you know, but in family circles, it was, oh my goodness, it was welcomed. It was welcomed. You were actually, you know, one of the funny, one of the folks that they liked because you talk so bad about, you know, this one and that one in such a funny yet mean way so mean people mean people going through their share of illnesses as a result of what they've done and then hiding lying denying shaming blaming you know the rest mean people on the job blaming other folks saying that what they said wasn't what they said and what they did wasn't what they did mean people in the family showing up at events we've got to guard ourselves Mind what we say, you see, mean people internationally, breaking all sorts of peace treaties, um, holding back from getting the necessary resources or what have you. Sometimes you've got to strong arm some people. You've got to be the one that's up in folks' faces and you've got to create rules, regulations and policies to get people to conform. It's sad, but so true when you know that there's some vengeance going on. And then, of course, most of all, we need to trust in the one true God and believe in him and know that his vengeance is so much better than ours. <laughs> Us coming up with a plan on how we're going to pay back and deal with mean people. Uh, uh, God has a way of making things happen where they will wish that they were never so mean. Sometimes it takes minutes. Sometimes it takes years. Sometimes you may not even be around, right? But somebody's going to reap what they've sown. Don't let it be you. We pray right now in the name of Jesus for all of us to just be more mindful of the things that we say and do that are harmful. We ask in Jesus name, Lord, that you will remove the words out of our mouths. Lord Jesus, that we either said or were planning on saying, Lord Jesus, and replace those words with something that will edify, uplift and encourage people. We pray in Jesus mighty name for our sisters and brothers who have been hurt um, emotionally, physically, spiritually as a result of mean people. We're asking in Jesus name that you will uproot those out of jobs where there's just constant meanness going on and that they will learn from what they've experienced and that what they have experienced will be the great motivator for them to do what it is that you have so called them to do. I ask in Jesus mighty name to let your will be done in the lives of my brothers and sisters in Christ who listen faithfully. And I ask Lord Jesus for blessings of healing and prosperity, love and appreciation, patience and all the desires of their heart be made manifested this season in Jesus name. I thank you as always for taking time out of your busy schedule to listen. You've been listening to YouTube and I'm in Surprise 7. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment, and we do welcome giving on this channel. Blessings to you.